Hello everyone, I'd like to talk to you about the infodemic within the pandemic, yet another lesson learned. We all know the far-reaching impact this pandemic has had on the health, economic and social fronts of society the world over. This is the first pandemic in history where technology and social media have helped to keep people updated and appraised about the progression of the pandemic. This very technology that kept one informed and connected also unfortunately enabled and amplified an infodemic that undermined global response and derailed the key measures being put in place to tame this pandemic. I would like to regale an experience I had recently. I was at a social event. It was a small gathering. We were gathered outdoors, wearing masks and all. And this smart looking couple, probably in their mid thirties, walked up to me and threw me this question, a question that is asked, asked so frequently, when will the third wave come? I replied, the coming of the third wave will depend on how warmly we welcome it. By gathering and mingling closely without wearing masks, by shaking hands and by getting together in large numbers in confined spaces, the third wave will be here. They smiled. And then I quickly asked, both of you must be vaccinated, right? There was an awkward silence and the man responded, well, we haven't taken the vaccine. What's the point? We could get infected even after the vaccination. I took a deep breath and tried to explain the merits of the vaccine. And I do hope my efforts will bear fruit sometime soon. It is such ill effects of the infodemic during this global crisis that I would like to expand on. It was the World Health Organization that coined the word infodemic. An infodemic is too much information, including misleading and false information in digital and physical environments during a disease outbreak. It could be in the form of misinformation or disinformation. Misinformation is the sharing of false and out of context information as fact, regardless of an intent to deceive. Disinformation, on the other hand, is a kind of misinformation with the deliberate attempt to mislead. False information started doing its rounds very early in the course of the pandemic. There was misinformation about whether COVID-19 was a serious disease at all. There was misinformation about whether public health measures, such as simple mask wearing, could actually protect you against the disease. There were so many erroneous facts and cures that were floated online. For instance, the use of a homemade hand sanitizer made from mixing rum, bleach and fabric softener was promoted on Facebook and YouTube as being very efficacious in preventing COVID-19. On the contrary, this concoction could be quite harmful. And then there was the Corona Cure Corona Infection Prevention Nasal Spray, which was fraudulently marketed online. Eating of sea lettuce and injecting disinfectant was again promoted as being very effective in preventing COVID-19. There were numerous conspiracy theories about the COVID-19 vaccine themselves. For instance, the government has introduced microchips into the vaccine. The vaccine could alter your DNA Taking of the vaccine could create an electromagnetic field around the site of injection. The vaccine contains cells of aborted fetuses and genes from pigs. This understandably created some religious concerns as well. And then of course, the pandemic was a ploy
to further vaccine sales. Taking the influenza vaccine could actually make you more vulnerable to COVID-19. COVID-19 vaccines create variants. And last but not the least, COVID vaccines don't work at all. The problem with sharing such scientific sounding information is that it markedly reduces vaccine intent. The technology that we face today actually causes people to believe so readily and people have been tricked into financial gain for financial gain and for also taking political advantage. Fraudsters have floated um, fake bank accounts in the name of contribution to uh, government relief funds. And disinformation via organized campaigns have got a very serious impact of enhancing distrust of the entire healthcare system. Despite the tough grind and the transformative and groundbreaking work of healthcare personnel and scientists from the very start of this pandemic, their efforts have been stymied by the misinformation and disinformation of the infodemic. Another worry is the burgeoning number of social media users. They are increasing by the minute. And today we have about 3 billion social media users and it's likely to be upped by another billion in the next couple of years. Fake information has been spread via social media to dismiss the seriousness of the disease, to polarize simple interventions that could protect people from the disease. It has manufactured fear in the minds of people about the vaccine itself. And it has also uh, been so widespread that it has targeted the very people who are most vulnerable for disease. Misinformation has the impact of creating long lasting effects. Even a short exposure to misinformation can actually create attitudinal and behavioral shifts. Lumba et al. in uh, a recent publication in Nature Human Behavior have shown that misinformation can actually make people not want to take the vaccine. It could make people um, uh, reject public health measures and resort to in fact unproven remedies. We need to actually make sure that false information is not spread at this furious pace because it can actually cost lives. This pandemic has laid bare one hard truth, that facts are insufficient to drive behavioral change. So what can be done? We need to restore public trust in science and evidence. We need to promote the um, quick dissemination of accurate information to all segments of society, particularly those who are most at risk. We need to prevent the spread of misinformation and disinformation, keeping in mind freedom of expression. Propagation of false information needs to be detected early and there needs, collect, needs to be collective action. At the World Health Assembly in May 2020, the WHO's member states passed a resolution recognizing that managing the infodemic was a critical aspect of the control of the pandemic itself. Member states were asked to relay and to disseminate reliable information to the public and be quick to counter false information by using the available digital platforms. We need to increase global health security, increase vaccine confidence. We need to address the unfounded concerns about the speed with which vaccines have been made. We also need 
to encourage individuals to check information that they encounter, double check it, take a second opinion. They need to recognize and report misleading information online. There are several online resources to guide individuals about possible misinformation and disinformation. One such is the myth busters uh, produced by the World Health Organization. Uh, in society, there is one segment that is eager and ready to take the vaccine. There's a, solid, there's a smaller segment that is not willing to take the jab and are stubbornly remaining so. But there's a third larger segment that's really undecided. And we need to work with that segment, motivating them to take the vaccine. And we need to also um, reiterate the importance of public health measures and give them information about right diagnostics and right treatments. People in public health authority need to be quick at debunking fake information and also falsehoods and myths. Governments need to establish rapid response teams that will work with social media firms to quickly remove false news and harmful content online. We need to harness the voice, the influence and the resource of philanthropy. We also, in my opinion, need to tap on the creativity, the energy and the resilience of the youth today. There is an online game called Go Viral, created by the University of Cambridge in collaboration with the UK government. Playing this game gives one a taste of the methods used to create false information. This enables one to detect and disregard misinformation in future. Debunking of fake news, full hoaxes, half-truths has to continue unabated. This pandemic has taught us that social media cannot replace quality journalism. We all need to get better at detecting, analyzing and exposing this information. And with this, we can turn the tide on the infodemic tsunami and work together towards seeing the back of this pandemic. Thank you.